Hey, what's up guys? Today is a good day. It is a fantastic day. First, we have some updates. Um, the first update is that we have a puppy giveaway uh, that will be announced in a couple days. From the time of making this video, it will be in the next two days, which would be this Wednesday. I'm not sure when I'll be posting this video. It depends on how quick I will be in editing it. Uh, but the puppy giveaway is going to be very, very soon, which is going to be this Wednesday. So thank you guys, everyone who entered the giveaway. And I will be hosting a live event on my Facebook and also my Instagram in announcing the individual who wins this giveaway. The second, uh, what should I say? The second thing that I want to update you guys on is our turf. We turf our backyard which I'm very very excited to share with you so I will be doing a video updating you on what it looked before what it looks like before and then the after effect of when we install the turf so that's something that I'm super super excited about to sh you know sharing with you guys as we venture into this whole breeding journey and my, my whole life so the, the third thing that I want to break to you guys is this Friday is going to be my last day at my job. I need to make a whole video about that as to what I was doing before and why I decided to resign from my, my current job and what I, my plans what my plans would be moving forward. Uh, so those, those are three things that I kind of wanted to update you guys about. So lots of videos coming in the future and I just want you guys to stay subscribed, like this video, share this video as well because this is going to be a video where I share some important tips for potential dog owners out there so lots of videos coming in the future and I just wanted to give you that quick update there so in today's video I will be talking about tips on how to avoid being scammed because this industry is one that has a lot of scammers um, a lot of people they have been scammed in you know a lot of people who want puppies into their family they've been scammed out of hundreds of dollars if not thousands of dollars and I've had a lot of customers you know before they get to me they've already been scammed so and it's my duty to ensure that I do the best that I can in ensuring that they're very comfortable in working with me and being um, you know just being open and honest with them throughout the entire process and try to ensure that the process is very smooth and there's no anxiety uh, for these for my customers basically. Uh, so these are going to be some helpful tips. I came across this wonderful post on Facebook and I decided to just go ahead and make a video on it. So the first tip is communicate with your breeders. So there's no breeder out there, there's no dog breeder out there in my opinion that will be very short or quick with a potential customer. Uh, so if you are a potential customer and you're looking for a dog, ensure that you're asking all the you know the right questions. Ensure that your breeder is very, is being very very communicative, because a breeder is going to go the extra mile to ensure that you're very comfortable in the whole transaction, in the whole process. And there's not one breeder out there who doesn't want their puppy to go to a family that is very loving and caring. So. Uh, it, it works both ways. So ensure that your breeder is very, very communicative. Ensure that any question that you ask, they're always there to answer because that is one way that you can avoid uh, being scammed. No, the, the scammers out there, they're not going to want to be, they're going to be very short. They're going to be very quick to answer. They're not going to be very thorough in their answer. So that's tip number one, be very, very communicative. Which kind of leads into tip number two which I kind of mentioned about just now is to ask a lot of questions. Ask questions, personal questions like what made you decide that you wanted to you know get into dog breeding? Uh, how long did you start this you know this operation? Ask them about their breeding program, you know what they're breeding, uh, what interests they have and so forth because each breeder breeder is different and each breeder have you know they have their own breeding program for what they're breeding for they you know i for instance i'm breeding for uh not only the you know the the nice attractive aesthetic look in puppies but i'm also breeding for show potential um you know dogs as well so that's something that i am planning on doing in the future to breed for uh, show prospects so you know each breeder has their own goal and their own breeding program so you know ask them about their breeding program you know allow them 
to give you some insight into their, their lives as a breeder and so forth. So ask as many questions because the scammers, they're not going to be very thorough with that. The third thing is do your own research. Ensure that you're visiting their website. If, they're, if they don't have a website, ensure that you're visiting their, their social media profiles, their Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, whatever it may be. Ensure that you're being very thorough. Most times, you're, you're gonna find that scammers, they're very new. They have a very new page, so they don't have any photos on their page. They don't have any posts on their page because they're this is a new new um page that they're starting up or a new account that they're starting up so be very vigilant in that in that regard ensure that you ask for a lot of photographs you ask for a lot of videos ensure that you know these photographs you're doing your reverse image searches because sometimes you're going to see these beautiful photographs and whenever time you do your deep, you, you know, you, you do your research, you find out that these photographs are taken from legitimate breeder sites where they would remove the watermarks or they would remove certain, you know, things about the picture or they would edit certain things about the picture and post these pictures saying that they own these puppies. Ensure that you're, you're looking closely at, uh, say for instance, the information that is outlined on the puppy sometimes you know you'd find that these cameras would even change the gender of these puppies so say for instance i post a puppy a male puppy that's white uh you'd find like the scammer would change the gender to say that this is a female puppy which is the same photograph you know obviously so ensure that you're you're being very careful with you know doing your own research ensure that the the puppy in question that you're asking about matches what they're saying over the phone with the information that you see on the social media platform or even the website. So, another thing that I want to add here is to ask for, do many phone calls, but also ask for either a photo or a video conference with that um, potential breeder. So, ask for, say for instance, a FaceTime or a Messenger um, video chat, Instagram video chat ask for these ways of communication so that you can meet the puppy virtually uh, also try and see if you could say for instance have them take a photograph of you them holding the puppy with your name there as well as the date you know that's another way of proving that you know this breeder is legitimate and they're in the right business or they're doing a legitimate business or that you're also checking their references you know check on their websites or even on their social media accounts to see who already purchased puppy from that person to see you know updated photographs maybe you'd even want to contact that individual you know by yourself and just you know do your own background research ask them how the breeder was ask them how the communication process was how the transaction was for them if they were comfortable making the transaction and also ask if the breeder is still communicating with them ask them you know if they do their you know their little checkups and to see if you know the breeder is still communicating with them because that's something that i usually do with my business and my potential customers you know whenever i have the time and i browse through to see who purchased from me. I send out a memo to see how that puppy is doing, um, so on and so forth. Another thing that just came to my mind is to, whenever time the payment um, is time to pay, ensure that they are not be adding on extra fees. So say for instance, you might find the scammer adding on potential fees, say for instance like a shipping fee or an additional fee to, for them to bring the puppy to the vet or to purchase certain things like crates and carriers and stuff like that. They're basically adding on more fees onto the original price for what the puppy was. Maybe you just want to go on to the next individual. And sometimes you see these puppies and they're very, very lovely. You know, they have very, very nice photographs and you can't stop thinking about it. But if it doesn't feel right to you, it just means that maybe this is not someone that you want to work with or maybe you need to do more follow-up research, maybe you want to visit that person, uh, that bre potential breeder in person, um, just to see you know, what they're about, to see uh, you know, if the puppy, if it's a real legitimate um, transaction, you know, so on and so forth. So do your due diligence and try and re research the, the price point for the breeds that you want. And most of these times, you know, puppies are not cheap, you know? So if you see someone who's posting a puppy for 
$500, $400, $100, even sometimes free, and they're adding on like a, a shipping fee onto it. More, more than likely, it's not, more than likely, it's just a scammer, you know, just ensure that you're not being very cheap with this because most breeds out there, they are very, very expensive, especially the breeds that I carry. They're very, very expensive dogs. So if you see someone post, say for instance, like a toy poodle, and they have them posted for $300 or $250, that's very, very cheap. And you won't even find a legitimate breeder out there that's selling their puppy for that price. So ensure that you're not being, you're not cutting corners and just being very, very cheap because more than likely, you're just gonna be, you're just gonna end up with a scammer. Um, so to speak. So ensure that you're doing your research on the price point for these puppies because they're not cheap. Not only do you guys, as in the customers, would get scammed from these um, scammers, but also us as dog breeders would also, you know, be be you know, be placed in that position as well, where we would, say for instance, get scammed out of a puppy. Say for instance, we, I don't know, I currently don't have any payment plans but say for instance someone who wants to take the puppy on a payment plan and they take the puppy and it turns out that you know the information that they provided to the breeder is false and they've just been you know scammed out of a whole a whole puppy so sometimes you know don't be surprised if us as breeders would go the extra mile into doing more research or asking you certain questions uh, because you know us as breeders more than likely you know we get scammed as well so I want to caution you as, as well that you know it's sometimes you'd find your breeder asking certain questions like what vet do you use or you know what's the contact information for your current vet or do you have any current vet in mind or what's um, the dog groomer that you're planning on using you know these questions kind of helps us as breeders to not only for us to feel comfy in knowing that you're going to be taking good care of the puppy but also to kind of weed out the, the scammers or the persons out there who are not really interested in buying the puppy from us. Also, especially me, um, we may not, don't be surprised if you find that most breeders they, they tend not to take certain type of payment methods. So say for instance I don't accept checks. <laughs> Checks is just one way that you can already tell that you're dealing with a scammer. Most of the times they're going to be like, can I send you a check and just wait until the check clears. Um, I don't accept ke um, checks. I don't accept PayPal because PayPal is one of those uh, systems where you find that you send the money and then you have that uh, customer dispute the charges and then they end up getting their money back and also the puppy. So you find that these certain methods in which you know you pay, so for instance, even Cash App. Uh, even though I accept Cash App, you know there are certain options out there like checks, Cash App, and Venmo, and, and so on that you may see that you know your breeder is not willing to accept because these are ways in which you can dispute these charges and you end up with a puppy and your money back and the breeder ends up with nothing. Sometimes you may also find that your breeder is not willing to have you visit their home or they would put off until the puppy is fully immunized for their age. So for instance, they received their first two sets of shots. Um, so don't be surprised if you find that, I hope I'm, I hope I'm focused because I don't want to redo this video. It took me a long time to set up. Don't play with me. Okay. So most of the times you'd find that the you know your breeder doesn't want a, a potential customer to come over to their home uh, because say for instance their home is where they do their business they they breed you know their dogs and so forth and they don't operate out of a kennel like a large kennel uh, so one. One of the reasons why I may potentially not allow individuals to come to my home is because you don't want individuals to track um, these transmissible diseases onto your dogs and even onto your puppies unknowingly some, most, most of the times, you know. So sometimes you may find that these pet lovers or these pet owners, they're, 
even you know they're petting like different pets and then they come into your home and then you're they're petting your puppies and stuff like that and they're transmitting these diseases unknowingly onto mm -hmm. your puppy or onto your facility in, even in your home you're, you know they're tracking these 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 um let's just say diseases in your home unknowingly without knowing so you know most of the times you may find that you know us as breeders we don't want individuals to come over and we'd rather say for instance do like a FaceTime so don't be surprised if you know your breeder doesn't want you to come to their humble abode and most of the time just whenever the puppies are too young or too vulnerable you know they don't have the immune system built up yet to fight off these illnesses so that's you know that's one way in which you know it can be very risky